hey, let's make another Photoshop brush. So today I wanted to focus on a funky dry textured brush pen to ink with, kind of like the Pentel variety that you see here. These are just my absolute faves. So let's jump right in and start with the texture like we did with our pencil brush. So we're starting here with some textures that I scribbled in my sketchbook. So we'll hit the M for Marquee Tool and select a box around our desired texture. And then we'll copy and paste it into a new 1000 by 1000 pixel document. This is the size I've arbitrarily chosen because it's big and detailed enough without being leggy, uh, but you can experiment. When I paste it in the new document, I'm just using the free transform tool, control T, to arrange it so that we have some craggy white spaces around the edges. This will work in tandem with our custom brush tips. We'll get to that later. I'm also just doing a quick desaturate and auto contrast. This just helps bring out the most of the texture and give us all that detail and craggy bits. I'm gonna say craggy like a hundred more times in the video, just a heads up. Also, if you're interested, I'm going to be collecting all the brush chips, textures, and brushes and throwing them up on a gum road and the link will be in my description and we'll continue doing that going forward until we create a neat little collection of brushes. This next step is optional. I'm just duplicating the layer and flipping it horizontally. This just gets us a bit more craggy bits on the other edge. And then I set the blending mode to darken just to like minimize artifacts. It's gonna look a little mirrored, but I don't think it's gonna be really noticeable in the end result. Then we're gonna select all, control A, and define brush pattern. Next, we'll make the brush tip. So I went nuts and made another whack of brush tips here. I'm gonna choose this square one on the bottom right. I made it with little loose wisps around it to help give the brush its dry edged look. So we'll take the marquee tool again and select the square tip and copy paste it into a 500 by 500 pixel document. This is a good size to keep the brush from lagging. It's just what I've heard from through the grapevine. I think that like 600 or like a thousand pixels is like the limit for a brush tip, just so you know. Next, we'll free transform it into place and give it a quick curves adjustment. You can use levels as well. We just want to crush the blacks here and fill out the inside of the brush tip while still leaving the edges craggy. I keep using that word. Make sure your brush is black on a white background and merge it down so that it's one layer and then we'll select all and then define brush preset. Give it a name and then we're on to the settings. Okay, here we are on the settings. So I start at the top at brush tip shape. The spacing deals with the fact that Photoshop's brush system is essentially a stamp of your brush tip shape that repeats over and over again to create the stroke. Since we're making brushes here and not like stamps or particles, we want to have as little spacing between each stamp as possible while maximizing the performance. The angle essentially takes the brush tip and rotates it on its center axis. This can be useful if you want to make like a diamond out of your square tip or something. It's personal preference. I don't think it makes a huge difference. The roundness will flatten or squish your brush. In tandem with angle, this can be kind of cool. It's like special use case. If I'm making like a ribbon or a bag strap, then I will sort of mess with the roundness, but it's not, I usually leave both of these at default. So next we're gonna look at shape dynamics. We're gonna do three settings in here. Firstly, we're gonna start with the size control, which we're gonna turn to pen pressure. This essentially changes the diameter of the brush tip based on the amount of pressure you are putting on the tablet pen. Now, as soon as you turn this on, it's going to make the minimum diameter nothing and you get this kind of sperm tail effect on edge to edge of the brush stroke. <laughs> it looks funny to me. And so what we will do next is actually set the minimum diameter to 50%. Your brush stroke will start at a larger diameter than just zero or one percent. It just gives a more realistic look. That's what we're going for. Now the roundness jitter is kind of a weird one. I discovered this while doing my last video on making a pencil brush, but essentially when you change this setting, it gives kind of an ink spreading on paper vibe that I just thought was really cool. So we're gonna, and I wanted to try that out for my inking brush. So I set this to 50%. It's pretty subtle, but you can play around with it or you can leave it out. It's optional. 
Next, we're gonna look at the transfer settings. In here, we have the opacity and the flow. The opacity basically deals with how transparent your brush stroke appears. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the flow is a little bit weird. It, as I understand it, deals with how much pigment comes out of your pen as you press down or whatever control you set. It's kind of like when you use spray paint and the harder you press, the more is gonna come out. It's really hard to tell the difference with this, but I basically just set both of the controls to pen pressure. The other thing I do is set the opacity minimum to 50%. This will control how transparent it is when you first start pressing. And I think it's better to have it a more opaque, depending on what you're trying to emulate, obviously. But I do find that if you leave it on the default or at 1%, it's very transparent and it gives like a glazy watercolor effect, which may not be what you want. So play around with that. I just put this to 50% and we're gonna move on to the next. So one quick setting here before we move on to texture is the smoothing. It's kind of weird because there's two different places to set this. In the brush settings panel that we're in here, there's a smoothing on and off switch essentially. It's usually on by default. I just leave it on. But I'm also gonna move up to the contextual menu at the top here where you can set an actual percentage. What this does is it's kind of like a line assist. It just helps like smooth your lines out and make them less wobbly. This is a personal preference, but when I'm inking, I like to do long swooping strokes and start like thick to thin, light to dark, etc. And it just helps to have a little bit more assistance. So I'm going to set this to 30%. Play around with this and see what you like. All right, on to the big stuff, the texture. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say that the texture is the most sort of futzy and noodly, muck around kind of section. It's very personal preference and it just takes some time to get it right. I actually really struggled here. I like to usually set the mode here to subtract or multiply. I think that when you're doing traditional media, these are the best settings. I did end up making two different types of brushes here, one that uses the subtract mode and one that uses the multiply mode. And we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of all of this. This is kind of a longer section because like I said, it's futzy, it's noodly. Let's get started. So we'll first start by selecting the texture we made in the beginning. Just go up to this little square preview image icon and then grab the drop down arrow and select your texture from the list. You can hover over these and it'll give you a tooltip with the name that you gave it if you can't find it, but it's usually the last one on the list. Next, we're going to choose the mode, which I'm setting this one to subtract. And then we're gonna switch over to the scale and set this to 100. I set this to 100 here, but in the end, I actually go with 200. So at this point, I'm just gonna outline the sort of the struggle I was having. Basically, I kept getting these repeating elements in my brush strokes. It was like gaps in the brush and texture in the brush that was repeating. And when I went to do my demo, it was like repeating in the same spot every time I drew, and it was like this line that was like really annoying. So basically, I used the scale to try to mitigate that. The larger you go with the scale is the less likely you'll see repeating elements. The other thing that will help with that is the brightness and contrast. And I'm gonna do my best to explain what these do, but essentially uh, the way I figure this out is by slidering things around and looking at the brush preview at the bottom of the brush settings panel, where it kind of shows you what is happening with the brush. So the brightness looks to be roughening or smoothing the texture in a sort of growing pattern, but it does it beyond the edges of the brush. The contrast does the opposite, smoothing or roughening the texture, but the growing pattern goes inward inside the edges of the brush. This is honestly the best way I can describe it, but you can just see what's happening as I slide her around in here. So in the end, I basically messed around with the scale, brightness, and contrast to just sort of balance how much texture and roughage I was getting in the stroke and also to help with any repeating elements just because I want some of that texture, but I don't want it to repeat too much. So um, that was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> uh, I did, like I said earlier, I made a subtract version and a multiply version of this brush. I am going to put the settings on screen for each of these brushes because they kind of change from what you see in the footage. I apologize for that. I just want to go, I didn't want to go back and re record everything. It's just kind of annoying. <laughs> so I'll put the settings on and then we'll go into the demo.
On to some final thoughts while I demo using our new inking brush. I hope the texture part made sense. It wound up way more complicated than I intended. I filmed it twice. The first time I had no issues, accidentally deleted the footage, and then the second time everything went pear-shaped, but we did wind up with a bonus brush. <laughs> so it's hard to know what I'm doing right or wrong right now since nobody, including the algorithm, knows who I am or what the hell I'm doing here. It really just feels like I'm shouting into the void a bit. But regardless, I'm enjoying making this series and I plan to keep going and make some painting brushes so we can paint these gals. I'd also like to make some special use case ones like particles or chains for necklaces. We'll see where we get. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If not, feel free to let me know in the comments what I can do to improve these tutorials. I would really appreciate it. I've never done them before, so naturally I already want to redo them all again to make them perfecter. <laughs> I'm trying hard to edit the crap out of these and make them as short as possible, but quite honestly, these aren't like a quick search and find the answer you're looking for in two seconds type tutorial. It's kind of more of an artistic meandering in the lab approach to making a very personal set of brushes you can be proud of, I guess. <laughs> So if you've made it to the end, I think you're part of the 0.1% who did. So I thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.